audience students and scholars here I am Dr. Ramjadali in this video we will learn about Cobb Douglas production function dear scholar in this video we will try to answer one of the main question that what production function describes how actual economies turn capital and labor into GDP uh, one answer to this question came from a historical corroboration between a U.S. senator and a mathematician. Paul Douglas was a U.S. senator uh, from Illinois from 1949 to 1966. In 1927, however, when he was still a professor of economics, he noticed a surprising fact. The division of national income between labor and capital had been roughly constant over a long period of time. In other words, as the economy grows more prosperous over time, the total income of workers and total income of capital owners grew at almost exactly the same rate. This observation causes uh, Douglas to wonder what conditions might uh, lead to a constant factor share. Douglas asked uh, Charles Cobb, a mathematician, um, what uh, production function if any would produce constant uh, factor share if factors always earn their marginal product so Cobb Douglas production function the production function would need to have a property that uh, capital income is equal to marginal product of capital multiply by k is equal to alpha y and the mar and the income of labor is equal to marginal product of labor multiply by l we get it uh, 1 minus alpha y so where alpha is a constant between 0 and 1 that measures capital share of income uh, that is alpha determines what share of income goes to capital and what share goes to labor so Cobb showed that uh, function with this property become as a uh, function of capital and labor is equal to a k power alpha l power 1 minus alpha where a is a parameter greater than zero that measures the productivity of available technology this function became known as Cobb Douglas production function so let's take a, a closer look at some of the properties of this function first the Cobb Douglas production function has a constant return to scale uh, that is if capital and labor are increased by the same proportion then the output increases by the proportion as well so while talking about the constant return to scale uh, to prove that the Cobb Douglas production function has a constant returns to scale examine what happens uh, when any constant is multiplied by capital and labor let's we have a as z as a constant here so multiply by our function we get <coughs> function um, zk zl is equal to a zk power alpha zl1 minus power 1 minus alpha so expanding the terms on the right side we get uh, a, a z power alpha k power alpha a z power 1 minus alpha l power 1 minus alpha so rearranging to bring like terms together we get uh, <coughs> a z l power alpha z power 1 minus alpha k power alpha l power 1 minus alpha uh, since we know that uh, a power alpha uh, sorry z power alpha z power 1 minus alpha is equal to z the function become l we get a uh, function of z k z l is equal to z a a k power alpha l power 1 minus alpha <coughs> but we have the main function here a power a k power alpha l power 1 minus alpha is equal to function of of capital and labor so thus uh, we have a, a constant multiplication with our our main function and we have z changes in our function and that z is also changes in our output hence uh, the amount of output increases by the same factor z which implies that 
this production function has a constant return to scale. So moving towards the marginal products of uh, Cobb Douglas production function. The marginal products of uh, for the Cobb Douglas production function can be measured by taking the partial derivative with respect to labor and capital. We have the main function here. So for for getting the marginal product of labor, we have to take the partial derivative of this function with respect to labor. And for getting the parts uh, uh, marginal productivity of capital, we have to take the partial derivative of this function with respect to capital. So far. <coughs> For getting the marginal product of labor, we take the partial derivative of, of this function with respect to labor. We get MPL is equal to 1 minus alpha, A K power alpha, L power 1 minus alpha. And for the marginal product of capital, we take the partial derivative of this function with respect to capital. We get MPK, marginal product of capital is equal to A alpha K alpha minus 1 and L power 1 minus alpha. So for, from these uh, equation recalling that alpha is between 0 and 1 we can see what causes the marginal products of, of two factors to change and increase in the amount of, of capital uh, raises the MPL and reduces the MPK. Similarly an increase in the amount of labor reduces the MPL and raises the MPK. A technological uh, advances the increases the parameter A raises the marginal product of both factors proportionally. The marginal products are for the Cobb Douglas production function can also be written as MPL is equal to 1 minus alpha y over L and MPK is equal to alpha y over K. So the MPL is a proportional to output per worker and MPK is a proportional uh, to output per unit of labor. Since we have uh, uh, a, a k alpha uh, L power minus alpha is equal to y over k and we have a k power alpha minus 1 and L uh, power 1 minus alpha is equal to y over k. Okay, while talking about the marginal products so for Cobb Douglas production function, we have here y over L is called the average labor productivity and y over K is called average capital productivity. If the production function is Cobb Douglas, uh, then the marginal product productivity of a factor is proportional to its average productivity. To verify it, if factors earn their marginal product then the parameter in details how much income goes to labor and how much goes to capital. The total amount paid to labor which is MPL multiplied by L equals 1 minus uh, alpha uh, into Y therefore 1 minus alpha is labor shares of output. Similarly the total amount paid to capital MPK multiplied by K equals alpha Y and alpha is capital shares of output the ratio of uh, labor's income to capital income is a constant uh, 1 minus alpha over alpha uh, just as Douglas observed. Okay the factor shares uh, depend only on parameter alpha not on the amount of capital or labor or on the state of technology as measured by parameter A. Here we have a classical example the ratio of uh, uh, of labor income to total income in United States from 1960 to 2007. Despite the many changes in economy over the past four decades this ratio 
hence remains about 0.7 this division of income is easily explained by a Cobb Douglas production function in which uh, the parameter alpha is about 0.3 according to the parameter capital received 30% of income and labor received 70% of total income the Cobb Douglas production function is not the last word in explaining the economy's uh, production of goods and services or the distribution of income between labor and capital it is however a good place to start so this is all about Cobb Douglas production function so see you with another video ciao